I hope you guys are all doing super well. Um, I am coming to you with a dream I had last night. So yesterday, um, or the day before, I was talking to uh, one of her sisters in Christ, Alex, and she was letting me know that she was doing a fast. And um, she asked me if I would join her uh, for some emotional support. So I did. So I did like a 24-hour fast, uh, just water, and that was yesterday. And uh, it was really tough. Like, I've done uh, longer, you know, three-day three, three day fasts. And um, yesterday was really, really tough. Like, I was feeling so emotional. And it was, like, it was tough. I was, um, it was really tough. But I spent uh, the day uh, with the Lord and praying and um, reading the Word and uh, you know how I, I mentioned to you guys uh, a few videos ago, I had gotten the complete Jewish Bible that I was reading. And uh, how in love I am with it. So I'm pretty much almost done that. I think I have uh, two or three chapters left and then I'm done. And um, I'm just letting you guys know that because that's how much um, I get excited to like read it. <laughs> I don't know. It's like I, I, once I pick it up, it's hard to put down, you know, and, and so, um, so anyways, I was spending uh, lots of time with the Lord yesterday, uh, cause I was struggling with my fast. And, um, so anyways, I made it through my fast and, um, it was great. And I made myself, um, some nachos after. <laughs> <laughs> I was having like crazy cravings for like so many different things, but I broke my fast with nachos. So that was, that was good. But what I really want to talk to you guys about is the dream I had last night. So I've been having, um, spiritual encounters and dreams like nonstop, um, for the last few weeks. And, um... But last night, it was something different and very significant. So for those of you that the Lord's given um, the gift of interpreting dreams, um, you know, please leave your comments um, in, the, in the comments. <laughs> and um, the Lord revealed to me a, a lot of what this uh, dream uh, meant as well. So, I just want to share with you guys because I think it's very encouraging. So, the dream starts off and I'm in a hotel. And, um, I believe I might have been with like one or two other people. And I'm not sure why I was there um, or how long I was staying. But I know when I first arrived there, I was in like a regular hotel room. And then in my dream, I remember, I guess, when I checked in, that there were suites available. So um, just, I guess, a suite would be like a, a bigger, nicer room, maybe. So anyways, I go down to the desk and I ask um, the man, I said, do you, can I upgrade my room to a suite? And in my dream, I see him and he's looking through his computer and you can see he's, he's, he's looking and he says like, oh no, like we don't have any, we don't have any left. They're all booked or, um, they're all, they're all being used. So I was asking him, I said, um, are there any available like, um, in a couple of days? So in my dream, I mean, I guess, I was staying there uh, for a few days. Again, I don't know how long I was staying there for or why I was there. So he again looks at his computer. And then, um, so then he says, um, there wasn't anything available. However, um, there was a penthouse suite. So uh, in my understanding, a penthouse suite would be like the highest of the floors on, in a hotel building and like the biggest and the nicest of <clears throat> rooms that you could get. So he said I could have this penthouse suite for the same price I would have paid 
uh, to upgrade my room and then he was giving me three nights free as well and I remember being really excited <laughs> really excited in my dream and then uh, so before I go to my penthouse suite, he says well let me check to make sure the room is ready and so uh, from my understanding he goes to make sure I guess it's clean and everything else and then he comes back and he says it's, it's ready it's good to go so then my dream changes and I'm, um, I'm again I'm with two other people I want to say it was like a man and a woman uh, and so we're going to the suite but for some reason I'm outside and I'm looking for this penthouse suite and um, almost like I don't know if I thought there was like another entrance and you had to go outside of the hotel to get to it but anyways at some point a man uh, shows us the way and then it switches and now I'm in my penthouse suite and I remember my dream I only saw a couple of different like rooms but it was really nice and it was like the top floor and I guess we had like the the whole roof like for like a like a balcony and I remember being really really nice and having like things that um, you normally wouldn't have in like hotel rooms and then I remember um, in my dream being like oh like I, we should uh, like throw a party you know because it was so nice like invite some friends or whatever um, and so in the dream I guess I had some people come and it wasn't like like an actual like like a super party but I guess it was just like a, a get together with people and, and people were walking around and hanging out and like talking um, in this like really nice place and then um, and then it changes and there were two people in my dream th that I know in real life and I had warned them um, I said but you can't, like, you can't get drunk. If you get drunk, I'm going to call the security to come and, and take you away. And I remember that being a significant part of my dream, too, because it changed to just focusing on two people. So then that happened. And the people were like, oh, no, we won't. Um, and then that, that, that was it for that. And then, so then my dream changes again. And I'm either, like, on a couch or, like, um like a couch or a couch bed and I'm like in bed relaxing and then this old creepy man appears and he goes to like get on the couch or to, to get in bed and right away because it's an old creepy man um, I go to get out of or get off of the couch or the bed or whatever this was and he tried and he grabbed me uh, like he didn't want me to go anywhere but I think I like I want to say like scuffled a bit, but after like, sh you know, shrugging him off, like I, I get out, um, off of whatever that was. And then my dream changes again. And now I'm no longer in my penthouse suite. Uh, but I am with those two people that I was in the hotel with. And it was almost like there were different scenes that were changing, but, but everywhere that, that we went, this old creepy man would show up and I remember thinking like you know what's what's going on with this guy like he's like you know it's like a stalkerish creepy old man and you know he shows up everywhere we go and then and then it changes so after these scenes where there's a couple of scenes of this happening where this creepy man shows up everywhere that we are um, there's a scene where again um, I'm with uh, I'm somewhere outside and with these two people and this creepy man shows up again and I remember telling them or telling one of them uh, you need to call the like call the police like we need to like do something so I remember they called the police and then it was almost like um, I want to say like a not like a cellar but it was like a or like a shop but it was like in in like the side of like a like a I want to say like a rock cliff or something like not like a cliff but like it was just like a shop or a cellar that was like in the side of like a, like a building and it had a door and my two friends went in there were were in there for some reason and then this creepy old man ended up going in there and then I and I closed the door 
with those two people in there. And in my dream, I don't know, it's like I don't think I purposely did that. I think I was just trying to keep the creepy man like away from me. Because I don't know, like it almost felt like I was the target of the creepy man. So I wasn't, I didn't feel worried in my dream that he was going to do something bad to those two people that I had like stuck with him in this shop or cellar or whatever it was. And I had done that because I was waiting for the police to show up. So while that happens, or, or when that happens in my dream, then on a boat, <laughs> like on this pig boat, um, I guess it's, it's symbolized, it's the police that show up. And this one man um, looks at me and he says, um, I'm sorry it took me so long. And then my dream changes again where um, it's no longer that they were, that the creepy old man and um, my two friends were in this cellar. Um, for some reason in my dream, I thought it, that they were on a boat. It was like they were on a boat. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And in my dream, I got worried because I thought that this boat had sunk. But in my dream, I was like, oh, I couldn't have sunk because I would have heard something and it happened too fast. Then my dream switches again, and it's the creepy old man, like, in a boat, but, like, inside the boat, and there's, like, a woman in there, and it's not the woman that was my friend, but I knew it was, he, he's, like, a bad man, and, and that woman was, like, stuck with him for some reason, and then I woke up. Um... So, it was a very interesting dream, and, um, oh, and for some reason I remember the number that the uh, penthouse suite was costing me was $130, and I remember seeing that, like, on the paper um, when the hotel attendant at the desk was, um, like, looking, um, looking to see and then, and then telling me that I could have the, uh, the penthouse suite. So I don't know if that's significant at all, the number 130. And then having, uh, three free days. So I don't know why I got three free days. <laughs> um, but, um, I think there's a lot of symbolic things, like, I picked up right away. Um, that the creepy old man uh, was the enemy. And um, uh, I also believe that getting upgraded rooms and then um, getting the, the, the top floor um, symbolism of um, achieving... Um, where the Lord wants me to be, or, um, because I often pray, I always ask them guys to, um, um, to continue to change me and to remove everything that's not of him that's in me, because I want to keep growing, and I want to be at the level where I'm at the highest level that I can be for him, that way, you know, when it comes to eternity, um, I can have the highest positions that I could have, let's say, in the kingdom of God or, or helping him out. Cause, and it's not so much about wanting the highest positions, but it's about like um, just making sure that I'm ready for whatever tasks or whatever he wants me to do, that, that I'm ready and that I've done everything that, that I can do in the sense of like, spending time and being in the Word and, and, and keeping myself holy and just um, listening to His voice. Because we know that it, nothing that we do um, or works um, can save us. It, it, it's, they can't. What we do doesn't add um, to the finished work of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, Jesus Christ, and his ultimate sacrifice on the cross that he died for us. That was the ultimate sacrifice. Um, and it's through his grace and the blood that he shed for us um, that we're saved 
and that we get to go home and that we have a relationship with him and that our sins are forgiven. Every single sin, there's, there's not one sin um, that that does not cover. Um, the only time that um, anyone is in danger of being eternally separated uh, from Yeshua or Yahweh is, is them making it the decision that they don't want him in their life. That's the only, that's the only way. Because uh, when Yeshua died, he died for us to be um, the last sacrifice, uh, an atonement of sins uh, for all sins. So um, saying that, you know, I always... The things that I do for him and how I behave and how I live my life, um, I do in respect for him. You know, I do because I love him so much and um, that he's worth it, you know. And not only that, but um, how we live, how we talk, how we treat people, um, that shows them who our hearts belong to. Right, because um, Yeshua said, you know, you're going to know a tree uh, by its fruit and no good tree puts out bad fruit and no bad tree puts out good fruit. So um, your actions and what you say uh, reflect where your heart's at. So, so I really, it's just... We just want to make sure that we're always representing him in the best way possible because most oftentimes um, those people um, that don't know him yet, that don't know Yeshua, um, it's seeing other people and going like, hmm, like what's that, what's that person doing that they're so happy or that they're at peace or uh, that they behave in this certain way? You know, and it's usually our testimonies and how we live our lives um, that really touch and influence those people around us. And um, and we want to allow um, Yeshua to work through us, right? Because it's Him um, that does everything. It's Him that, that gives us the words to say at the right time or um, the actions to take in certain situations. Um, and in order uh, for him to be able to do that, we have to have a relationship and we need to be uh, communing with him and speaking with him and, 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 and being able to hear his, little vo his voice when he speaks to us. So I've just been feeling his presence um, just like intense, like just... Um, you know, like yesterday was great. Like I, I struggled with the fast, but I, but we talked and I spent time with him all day yesterday. And, um, because I was reading, um, uh, the word, uh, he was giving me all these revelations and, um, it was amazing. It's, um, I always laugh cause I'm like, if somebody could have just seen me like reading my Bible and I'm just like with this huge smile and, um, it's just, it's just amazing. He is so amazing. Um, so today I have this, um, this peace and, and I feel his love and, um, that dream, I uh, was just confirmation for a lot of things. And I, and, and I also really believe that that police officer that showed up, uh, represented Yeshua. And uh, what really touched me is when uh, he said, um, I'm sorry it took me so long. And I think we all can um, relate to that because I always ask him every day. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I want to come home. Like, come get us. Your bride is so ready. Uh, we just want to be with you forever and, and you know, and see your uh, your amazing smile and spend time with you and and then go on adventures and, you know, just um, to start that new phase of our, our eternity of um, being able to, like, do um, his work um, 
and the spiritual and just I'm just so excited. So those words that um, that policeman figure um, said that I'm sorry it took so long really touched me because I feel like um, of course he's super excited uh, to come get his bride and he wants to be with um, all um, his people, all his family that that he that he that he died for, that he that he sacrificed himself for. Uh, because he's been waiting a long time too, so he's just as excited. Um, so um, that was really exciting too. So um, I just wanted to share it with you guys because um, I've just had so many dreams, and um, I've also been working in the spiritual. And um, I know. Uh, for those of you that follow other brothers and sisters in Christ on YouTube, that everybody's saying the same thing, that we can feel that we're at the end. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's like every day um, that we're here, it's like, it's surprising. <laughs> um, but it's also been an opportunity to continue to get closer with him. And I feel like, he knows how much we want to come home and he knows how much we don't belong in this world and he knows how much we struggle because um when you just want to be home uh when you know what's waiting for you um it's you know you don't belong here and it's the hardest thing to um to continue to just um I want to say just like survive right because that's what it is or we're just like or like coasting because we know we're out of here so soon so we know there's no uh future on on earth in this physical realm because um you know everything's about to get purified so i just want to encourage you guys to stay strong and um Oh, I also want to say something too. I know the enemy's been attacking um, like crazy, and I know I know everybody's going through trials right now. And I wanted to just let you guys know that um, I'm praying for you guys, and I'm there with you. Like I, the enemy has just been. There were days where it was just constant uh, mental attacks of like bringing stuff up from the past, feelings of the past, things uh, that hurt me in the past, people. Like it was just a struggle. Like it was just a bombardment of just like, you know, uh, thoughts after thoughts after thoughts. And I had to rebuke and just, um, but it was like, it's tough. So I want you guys to know that you're not alone and that, um, that I'm praying for you guys and if you need to talk, send me a message because I know, I know, I know it's really tough right now. Even, um, there was a few nights ago, uh, when I was going to bed, the enemy was trying to mess with me. And you guys have probably gone through this before too, where, um, so I'm laying there trying to go to sleep and I've, um, you know, I've said my prayers or, or I'm always talking to the Lord, but you know, I always talk to him a little bit before I head to bed. And then all of a sudden I get this like creepy, uh, like the creeps, the enemy, I know it's the enemy trying to like mess with my mind of this creepy feeling like there's, there's something's going to happen in my room or there's something there or whatever. And every time that happens, I know it's the enemy that's just trying to like mess with my mind. And, um, uh, it never works because I always remind him like, uh, my father is Yahweh and he's the creator of everything and controls everything. And, um, <laughs> I was like, you can't, don't, don't try and mess with me. You know, like I'm not in the mood and you know, the power that lives inside me and you want me to start calling down angels and you know, like I just like, don't mess around. But he tried to do that. It was like two or three nights in a row. So, um, it just, the enemy's just been like a pain, you know? <laughs> so, um, know that you're not alone and know that the enemy is just like, it's like, he knows his like time's done. So it's just like, it's just trying to mess with us as much as he can and, and just, um, you know, get us off track and trying to discourage us. And, um, so don't get discouraged. Know that, uh, Yeshua could come at any moment. Like, it's just, 
it's like we know. Like, you know, you can feel it, <laughs> you know, you just, we know. So, um, stay encouraged, keep your eyes on Yeshua, on your eyes on Jesus. Um, keep talking to him, just spend time with him and, um, in prayer too. Prayer is so important. If you can't, you know, read the word, that gives, it strengthens me so much because, you know, when the enemy attacks sometimes, scripture will pop into my head and I'll just, you know, I'll say it. And, um, it gives you strength. Scripture will give you strength and then remind you of the power that you have because Yeshua lives inside you. And, um, and so, um, it's super important to just keep your eyes focused and stay excited. I know that he's coming. Nothing has changed. If anything, you can see everything in the world is just like, there's just so much. <laughs> there's just so much with, with weather and uh, nations and countries and governments and um, just, it's like we're there. Um, if you read the Bible, um, Old Testament, all the way through, um, you know, I firmly believe that, um, like the apostles back in the day, even in the time uh, when Yeshua left and that um, he died and came back and then, um, you know, um, ascended up to heaven, um, that um, when the apostles were spreading the gospel and trying to spread the gospel throughout the world, um, they were going through tribulation. So we know that... Um, the world's been going through tribulation for a very long time. And uh, my belief is that what we're waiting for is a great, great tribulation to start because uh, Christians um, have been dying um, since the beginning, since the gospel was first uh, being preached. So, um, and, and people have been having dreams and visions and... Um, Prophecy messages. I mean, it's it's been happening since uh, the Ruach Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit, came down um, on the disciples, and then they started laying hands on other people and 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 baptizing people um, and um, with the Holy Spirit as well. So, um, for the, for those people that that don't think that we're right here, um, we're things are about to the great great tribulation is about to start just remember that tribulation's been happening for um for a very long time so um we're right there and um i mean this video would get way too long I'm almost at 30 minutes already but um just some of the other revelations he's been giving me in the last couple of days they they were just all confirmations that um, that we're heading home at any second, uh, because it's, it's almost feels like, um, the enemy knows that we are, and it's like, everything has been wound up, and everything, it, it's just like, it's just ready, it's just waiting, uh, for God to take, you know, the, the first batch of people, because I really do believe there's going to be more than one rapture, raptures, um, but that he's just waiting for that initial, the initial start of everything, and then the enemy will be able to just, like, get things started. I really believe that everything is good to go, and he's just waiting for that moment to just, um, to just let everything unravel with the Antichrist and the world government and, um... The mark of the beast and just the, the, the great tribulation and then the the earthquakes and, and everything that's going to happen and God's judgment. I mean, it's just about to happen. So stay encouraged. Know that I love you, um, that I'm always praying for you guys and um, that we're going to see each other really soon. So again, um, if you need to talk, send me a message um, and um, know that... Um, your brothers and sisters love you. You're not alone and that we're going to see each other really, really soon. So, um, just a quick prayer. So, um, Yahweh, Father God, Yeshua, we just thank you, uh, for everything that you put in our lives. We ask that your perfect will always be done. Um, 
we ask that your precious blood, uh, Yeshua, we poured out all our brothers and sisters and their families and friends and homes and pets and everything under our stewardship. That way everything's protected and sanctified uh, by your precious blood. Uh, we ask that you would continue to help us grow in closeness with you, Yeshua, and that um, we would continue to love our brothers and sisters and help us uh, to keep being strong and to protect us from the enemy and to give us the encouragement to keep going, to finish the race strong uh, because we know we're headed home so soon. So we thank you, Lord, uh, for your love and for, for filling our hearts with your peace and for, um, for all the beautiful things that you do for us. And uh, we just uh, bless your holy 